Liberian police raided the headquarters of the former ruling Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC party, on Thursday, leading to a scrimmage with party supporters. As Denise Nipson reports from Monrovia, several individuals have been arrested as calm is restored. Liberians woke up on Thursday to the sound of gunfire, tear gas, and roadblocks near the headquarters of the opposition CDC. Businesses in the area shut down and pedestrians' movement impeded. Jala Nelson is the deputy director of operations of the Liberian National Police. He told VOA that the altercation began when the Liberia Drug Enforcement Agency, LDA, began a raid in the vicinity of the CDC. The Liberia Drug Enforcement Agency was executing a search and seizure warrant in the same vicinity of the CDC headquarters in a place called Small Town along the beach. And accordingly, the massive resistance from some community dwellers, which led to a couple of them sustaining injuries, and then they, they fled the scene. Thereafter, at about 5 Friday, we got a distress call from road users that uh, the roads were being blocked, especially the Tottenham Boulevard, specifically in front of the CDC headquarters. And our stones were being thrown at moving vehicles. And the police being responsible for the maintenance of law, of law and order we had to move in try to contain the situation. However, CDC Secretary General Jefferson Koji says the police statement is misleading and that it was the government's plan to attack the opposition. He says one opposition supporter was gone down in the process. What we say to you, it is a calculated cover-up. Don't know FDA people who came here. Those were state some mercenary. Our premises were invaded was as early as 3 to 4 a.m. in the morning. They also engaged into sporadic shooting. There were over 600 tear gas that was shot on our premises, over 25 persons been incarcerated, and it's believed to know that one person has lost their life. Addressing the press on Thursday, Information Minister Jerry Limick Pia said the government will not tolerate lawlessness. A whole group of people just torment the rest of the country because of their own self interest. So, as we speak, the National Security Council of the country is meeting, and they will think what you're doing is a play play thing, you're joking, because we will act and we will act decisively. As a former president, instead of being a state fan, you allow your party headquarters to be used as a ground of thuggery. Former President George Weah has told the local front page Africa publication that the police action violated peace and security of the country. The incident has generated mixed reactions from Liberians, with some saying the raid was untimely and have the potential to disrupt the peace that Liberia has enjoyed over the years, while others think the CDC is overreacting. For Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsin in Morocco. Tanzania's main opposition party, Chadema, has called for a judicial inquiry into the alleged abductions and killings that have gripped the country. Speaking at a press conference on August 22nd, Chairperson Freeman Bowie said the matter should be addressed urgently. Mr. Bowie said that of all the reported cases of missing persons and abductions across the country, over 60% took place in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's largest city. He also claimed that some of the victims were senior Chadema readers, raising concerns about targeted political violence. These are not isolated incidents, said Mboe. What we are seeing is a disturbing pattern of enforced disappearances with a significant number occurring right here in Dar es Salaam. The Chadema leader went on to accuse state security agencies of involvement in their disappearances. According to Mr. Mbowe, the party's investigations have uncovered information from various sources, including insiders within the police force. He said, what we have found is alarming, he said. 
There is a task force initially set up to combat armed robbery that seems to have shifted its focus. This group now appears to be involved in these abductions operating outside the formal legal framework. He claimed that more than 200 people have disappeared under suspicious circumstances, many of them reportedly tortured by the security task force. The implications, he said, are serious not only for those directly affected, but for Tanzanian society as a whole. The citizen tried to contact the police spokesperson, but the calls went unanswered. He had not responded by the press time. Mr. Mbowe said the police could not be trusted to investigate themselves. Instead, he called on President Samia Suru Hassan to use her powers under the Inquiries Act to set up a judicial commission of inquiry. The police force is compromised, he said. The only way to get to the truth is through an independent judicial commission of inquiry. We urge the president to take this step to restore peace, unity, and stability. Chadema is also pushing for the repeal of Section 4 of the Tanzanian Intelligence and Security Services Amendment Act of 2023. This section, Mr. Mbowe urges, gives excessive powers to national intelligence officers, allowing them to arrest people without due process. This law is being abused, Mr. Mbowe urged. It gives too much power to security officers, and we have seen how the power is being abused. In the capital, Dodoma, Tanzania's Commission for Human Rights and Good Governance announced it was conducting its own investigations into more than 80 cases of disappearances reported between 2020 and 2024. Retired Judge Matthew Mwaimo, who chairs the commission, said these cases span 15 regions, with most incidents occurring between 2020 and 2024.